It's time to score some goals today. I'm gonna show you how to use Guardiola's fearsome Manchester City tactics in FIFA 23. So here's our starting point, but it's worth noting Guardiola never sticks to the same team or even the same formation all the time. But for the purposes of this video, we are gonna be using the 4-3-3 holding variant in FIFA, which gets us the closest to how they usually line up in real life. So we got the formation down, let's hop into the tactics. Starting off with the defensive tactics, press after possession loss is what you want, but where we're gonna change from the Manchester City default is actually dialing the width back to 35 and the depth we can leave at 80. This is way more true to life to the way City actually play in reality, and it's gonna give you these kind of defensive overloads where you can swarm players in the center of the pitch and also start the press pretty high up the pitch. You wanna be very careful here to keep players in your backline who are fast enough to cover if and when balls get played in behind. This is the weakness of this formation, so make sure you have a pacey backline to account for it. But now comes the fun part, offense. <laughs> so these are pretty typical settings for a possession oriented team. Slow build up and possession, it's gonna make sure you have plenty of options in the build up, but you wanna dial the width all the way back to 30 again. And I'll show us some gameplay why this is the case in just a second. Uh, but just to round this out, we do want players in the box to seven corners uh, and free kicks can both be set to three. Now taking a look at the tactics for offense, the narrow width is what keeps this really realistic to the way City play. Tons of options in midfield to overlap, and we'll show with the player instructions how we can keep some width with the wingers. What you wanna focus on is having a lot of options in the midfield to build the play up slowly, and then create overloads with the seven players in the box when you're actually putting balls in. All right, so those are the general settings. Now let's actually get down to the player instructions. Now, starting from the back and moving forwards, the goalkeeper Ederson is crucial to the way City play. You want comes for crosses, but also a sweeper keeper. You wanna, if you don't actually use Manchester City, find yourself a goalkeeper who's good with his feet and is comfortable playing out from the back. Now, in terms of the two center backs just in front of him, all the default settings are fine, no need to worry. It's actually the fullbacks in this formation that are gonna make the difference in defense. So by default, if you're using City, Walker's gonna be set to join the attack. To be realistic, that's not his role these days. You want it more unbalanced. The run type is what's crucial though. You wanna set this to inverted and also do the same for your left back. Now the Cancelo role does get forward a lot. You wanna join the attack and have inverted on the left back as well. And this is one of the more unique things you'll see in FIFA. So pay attention to where our fullbacks are at. Rather than sticking wide on the touchline like you'll see in a lot of formations, they're coming inside and helping the build-up play, almost playing like defensive midfielders. This is how City have been running in real life uh, this season, and it's a really unique way to allow your actual center mids to get forward and create some dangerous situations up the pitch. All right, so back to our midfield, the central defensive midfielder, you wanna have the defensive behavior set to cut passing lanes and then also stay back while attacking on attacking support. This is kind of a no nonsense position that just keeps things ticking. And again, if you're using your own team, look for someone who's just kind of a no nonsense uh, central defensive midfielder. Now just in front of him, the Gunduan role, you wanna get forward off of attacking support and then also get into the box for crosses. This is the central midfielder that you want in the box, uh, receiving balls and scoring goals for you just behind the striker. On the other hand, the De Bruyne role, again, is actually gonna be pretty significantly more custom. We're actually gonna go back to the squad tab here, and instead of having him as a center mid, you wanna look at this area down here and actually switch the position to a right attacking midfielder instead. A little unconventional, but again, this is way more realistic to the way he plays in real life. Now, for defensive support, because he is listed as an attacking midfielder, you wanna come back on defense because it's not like he just stays forwards. Uh, however, you wanna set the De Bruyne role to stay on the edge of the box for crosses. We'll see in just a minute why this is so important in the gameplay, but if you have a player like De Bruyne, it is crucial to getting him working. You also want drift wide off of positioning freedom. And now let's take a look. These are the kind of spaces De Bruyne loves to occupy in real life. Just outside the area, putting those curled crosses and through balls in. And being as an attacking midfielder in the game is gonna allow way more of those situations to happen. All right, so this is the part I was talking about earlier now. For both of our wingers, um, you wanna set probably to come back on defense to help with the press, but the really important settings are gonna be chance creation stay wide, which again is gonna allow our two wide wingers to actually keep the width of our formation despite the team staying really narrow because of the settings we had earlier. 
And if we're keeping this true to life for Manchester City, it could get a little complicated with the right winger. When Bernardo Silva plays, you actually wanna have the support run set to come short instead of get in behind. That's the way he plays on the wing, but depending on what kind of players or formation you're lining up with, as let's say you have Mares on the wing instead, that type of player, you can switch the support run to get in behind instead. There are subtle differences, again, to the way City plays, but this is what you're gonna wanna watch out for. So with both players pinned wide, again, we have a very narrow central midfield, but look at how these two wingers offer some support in wide areas. And if you're gonna be able to put in crosses like that, they're gonna cover the players who are marked in the center of the pitch, and a lot of times you're gonna find these wingers free. So if you have players like Mares who can get crosses in, or even just take on a man with a dribble, you're gonna find a lot of great attacking scenarios. So now we take a look at the most important role, Holland's position at striker. Now, for support runs in this role, you might think that you want someone to stay central, but we actually want balanced width. We'll see why in a minute. And then with attacking runs, get in behind. You want a big, strong, fast player who can make those runs, bully defenders, and cause a lot of havoc. Defensive support, uh, definitely stay forward. This is the one player who's kind of exempt from the defensive work. You just wanna look to get balls to him. And now let's take a quick look at these types of runs. You can see Holland actually playing in this role is always looking to make those runs. And if you can get your head up and find him, uh, you can see even when the play might not be on, he's peeling a little bit wider, pulling defenders out. This is why you don't wanna always have him set to stay central. The mixture of going down the middle and sometimes peeling out wide lets players like Gundogan get in behind and actually act as a striker coming in late to the box. So go ahead, check out another tactical breakdown. I've got one linked here, and I hope to see you again soon.